Hey there guys, today I'm going to be doing another review of Trustware. Now the reason for this is, is about three months ago, um, the Icon 2020 uh, told me about the new version 4.00 and now they've released a minor version 4.01. So I'm just going to come back to it and review it pretty much. Um, right. So I'm just going to go to um, version updates. I'm just going to show you exactly what they've changed. So I reviewed 3.41. So here's the fixes since that. Version 3.42. This is a minor version which includes a small number of bug fixes. Um, several situations where keyboard input was scrambling Firefox uh, running inside the buff zone. Improved uh, handling of Office 2007 10 documents which contain macros. Uh, this is a major version, uh, this is version 4.0, uh, which includes Windows 7 and Vista 64 bit support, as well as several performance and stability improvements, and enhanced removable devices, protection capabilities, and enhanced support. Or enterprise deployment. Um, several rare situations which might result in operating system in, um, instability. Improved support for multiple monitor displays. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, you know, and to be honest with you, I'm going to be completely honest here. I don't think that you're going to see. That much of a difference when you when you look at it. Um, you know, if you take a look at my video uh, that I did a year ago and and, um, and compare it with this one, maybe you will see a difference. But I honestly I can't remember what the other one was like. Uh, you know, you know, like how it will be different to this. I mean, the interface. I know this much. The interface looks exactly the same. So we're going to go ahead and install it. So apparently when I was reading through that version list you can actually put the free version on an en enterprise computer. So I'm guessing that Buffer Zone is just a free product altogether. Then I guess you can use it for business, enterprise, whatever you want. And obviously, we're not using any antivirus for this. We are just installing Buffer Zone on its own. And obviously, I think that Buffer Zone on its own really does the job, just because of how it works. It trusts all signed executables, and any executables that don't have a certificate, you can choose to run. So, as long as you're pretty good at telling what is a virus and what isn't, then you're good to go. But if you are inexperienced and you want to use this product, you really do need to have an antivirus as well as this, okay? So I booted back into Windows and Buffer Zone should just pop up any minute asking us to register. Yeah. So, pop in your name, pop in your email, and then you can choose, as I said before, you can choose to um, add the sites that you want to protect. 
uh, folders you wish to hide when surfing the internet. So those are two pretty important folders. Um, you might also want to add your pictures. Well, I thought you're supposed to. Um, I thought you add directories as they are here, but for some reason I can't. Anyway, um, quick finish. Registration was successful, and you're done. And by the way, they don't actually. Um, they don't e email you at all, barely at all. So, so you know, it isn't a scam or anything. I think it's just to register the product, really. And of, of course, then of course, why would they scam you? You know, they are a legitimate company. They probably just send you an email saying that just just where has been updated. So I'm not going to bother looking at the tutorial. So, um, kind of looks a little bit different somehow. I don't know how, but yeah. So if we go to that's the summary. The policy. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. So any USB discs and CD, DVD is going to be um, is going to be trusted because you know mostly you buy software from the store and that obviously doesn't have any viruses on it. So. Right, so that's recommended, and that's what I'm going to leave it on. You got the firewall. Um, I honestly don't know how to use the firewall exactly, um, but I, but actually, yeah. Um, if you just oh yeah, it's simple. It's simple. You just simply add ports and stuff. That's all you got to do. So it's pretty simple really, just like any other firewall, add a new port that you want to forward and all of that. You can set a password for the settings, uh, draw a red border around it and blah, 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 blah. When a trusted program un opens an unknown script for the macro, yeah best leave that on prompt. Uh, on prompt. You can automatically empty the buffer zone. So, let's say every five days. Delete buffer zone registry in the virtual files. Um, say apply. So, what I'm going to do for signed installer is I'm going to say outside buffer zone automatically and those aren't protected so they have to really worry about those so now I don't know uh, let's see enable I don't know, I, I guess it's enabled because I keep clicking it and all it does is opening up to help. But anyway, I, I've uh, gone on long enough, I'm just going to leave it there. So, so it optimizes the, uh, the program, the, the um, internet browser for the first one. So malware mainless.com
Uh, let's try the Zeus Trojan. Okay, so we're going to paste this in. And nothing happens. Um, let's try this one. I think. Oh, hang on, actually. Wait a minute. Maybe it was because. I don't have my fast antivirus. Yep. Yeah, you see the thing is is I need to turn it off because all otherwise you just simply cannot do it. So I'm sorry about that, I totally forgot to turn off the antivirus. Um never turn off your own antivirus by the way. Um Well, um, chances are that the reason why these two didn't get downloaded is because of that. Right, here we go, here we go, finally. Right, so run. <laughs> okay. I don't really get any choice of that. Um. Okay, smart screen filter is off, so that I don't know what that was about. Uh, let's just try something else then. Sorry that this is taking a bit of time to get into, it's just, um, it's just for some reason I don't really have much luck with links on it, because all I do is, is I just go for the most recent ones and then paste in quite a few of them. And I just fall. <clears throat> so, Trojan Critics. Another Zeus. Let's have a look at the um let's have a look at the buffer zone, see what happens. Okay, so we got free internet explorers for me. And that's it. Now, as you can see, the uh, internet activity is contained, and the privacy threats and the system threats. Those are basically all files that you get when browsing the internet, but they've actually been contained inside the buffer zone, so they don't touch your normal system. So, buffer zone is basically a automatic version of sandboxing. That, that it just is totally, totally automatic. So, so let's try the Trojan downloader then. See if that does anything for us. Uh, 
I doubt that is going to do anything for us. Um, Trojan Gozi, maybe. Nope. Okay. Usually, you get more luck with the EXEs. That's if Windows somehow doesn't block them. And we get some pictures of a car, two tubs of cream, and a few bathrooms. Weird. Another Zeus. Looks like it's from the same maker actually. Just the um, same sort of people. Because of the name, I guess. Right, I'm going to have to call it quits soon because this is just dragging out a little bit now. Um, let's, uh, I'm just going to check the time. Right, okay. I'm going to go... I'm going to, I'm going to try these four here and then I'm going to call it quits. Here we go. No. It's ridiculous. How does Windows just block it? I mean, sure, it doesn't have a valid digital signature, but, but you know. Um, I mean, most of the times when it, something doesn't have a digital signature, it lets it run, so I'm a bit confused with that. Actually, we will try the rootkit zero access because um, those things can be usually quite powerful. No. So that's it. So, you know, we've got. The um, if we have, have a, if we have a look at the buffer zone programs, all of these programs are going to be running in the buffer zone just by default. So if there's a, any program out there that you want to add to the buffer zone, you just simply click this add button and then type in the the exe. Either that, or click browse and browse the exe, and then that program will always be run inside the buffer zone. And the really nice thing about buffer zone, which makes it a little bit better than sandboxy, is that it gives you the chance to run it outside of the buffer of the um, the sandbox. So with sandboxy, if you download something in a sandbox web browser, and let's say you want to use that. You install it, and then, you know, all of a sudden, it's inside the sandbox, and you want to get it back, and you recover it. 
well, you're not going to be able to recover that registry. But whereas with the Buffer Zone Pro, you can just simply say, right, okay, I trust this program, please run it outside the Buffer Zone. And then it just runs it outside the Buffer Zone and you install it as normal. Um, so yeah, you know, w w I mean, with Sandboxy, if you were using it as your only means of protection, you know, you don't have to do a, f uh, I mean, with Sandboxy, you have to run your, your browser on Sandbox, but with this, as long as you know what you're doing, you can just sandbox everything, and you don't have to worry, really. So you can empty the buffer zone, go ahead and delete everything. So, now, absolutely everything that we downloaded, including any viruses or injections of rootkits, is just all gone, just so easily. So I'll just have a look at if there's anything else that I can I can help you with. Got you got forbidden programs that you, you just if these programs run you can't run them. Advanced rules email. Um, you can look at the event log and see what's been happening so you know you get a bunch of reports of information of what's happened and we've only had this installed for a, a few minutes and already it's just got tons of stuff to look at so that's pretty much it really um, buffer zone it would have actually worked you know, trust me, it will have actually worked. If it downloaded a virus, the virus would be contained, and all you'd have to do is flush the buffer zone, flush the buffer, and uh, and then the virus would have just been killed instantly. And it's contained, and it can't do anything to your sensitive data. So thanks for watching this video. I'm sorry about how much time was just wasted because um, my links never seem to work off of MDL. So yeah, I'll speak to you later. Have a good day and I'll put up some more videos soon. Bye bye.